Okay, so the golden ratio is a number. It's about 1.618, and it appears in so many different systems in nature. It's amazing. It appears in so many biological systems. It's You can see it in the proportions of features on a well-formed human face, in sunflower spirals, in physical systems, chemical systems, crystals. It's it's really abundant in nature. People seem to have a natural affinity for things that are in this type of ratio. Uh, it seems to have something to do with our aesthetic notion of beauty. And what I think is most interesting is the different places that this number appears in mathematics, because it seems to appear from places in number theory and places in geometry in such fundamental ways. I think it's very, very interesting, and it seems to be a sign that there's a lot of sort of hidden order and connections between things. I mean, that you'd see the same number appear in all these different systems, um, you know, in some sense, that means, I guess, that there are a lot of laws going on. This is a kind of comforting number in a way. Um, anyway, let's have a look at what it is. So, start with 1 and 1, add them together and get 2. Then 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, and so on. So to get the next number in this sequence, we add together the current number in the last one. This is a Fibonacci sequence. If you look at Fibonacci members of this Fibonacci sequence that are far out and divide the last number by the second to last number that you've got, the result approaches this number, the golden ratio. This is one way to tell you what the golden ratio is, okay? So we generate these Fibonacci numbers and then say we've just generated them up to here, well, we divide this one by this one, we've got two. That's kind of close to the golden ratio, but this one divided by this one, three over two, one and a half is even closer to this. And five divided by three is even closer, etc. And in the limits, as you go really far out, you basically converge on the golden ratio. So basically, when you're really far out to find the next Fibonacci number, um, you can multiply the current Fibonacci number by the golden ratio and it'll be pretty close to the next Fibonacci number Okay, so that's one Another way to talk about the golden ratio is in terms of the golden rectangles, so Basically imagine that this solid green rectangle is similar to this dotted green rectangle well, then the ratio of a to B will be the golden ratio. So, in other words, what I'm saying is if we assume that this, the length of this long side of the solid green rectangle, which is A plus B, divided by the length of the short side, which is A, is going to be the same as that thing for the dotted green rectangle, which is this long dotted side length A divided by this short dotted side length B. If we assume that, and we do the math, we find out that this ratio is the golden ratio. It appears in the pentagon. The pentagon is obviously an immensely important thing in geometry. Um, and if we have a pentagon, and this is a unit distance here, then the length across the diagonal of a pentagon is going to be the golden ratio. And there's a very interesting geometric kind of ways to think about this. Um, if you draw in all the diagonals of a pentagon, you get a pentagram, which is like a sort of five-pointed star, and that has another pentagon inside the middle of it. And then you can do a kind of infinite regress. I've heard there are ways you can demonstrate that the golden ratio is an, irra is an irrational number by doing that kind of thinking. That means the golden ratio can't be written as one integer divided by another integer. Maybe the most interesting, or no, I shouldn't say the most interesting, these are probably all on par, but certainly a very interesting appearance of the golden ratio, um, which I've only begun to appreciate in recent years, is how important it is in its appearance in the theory of continued fractions. So 
there's this beautiful expression for the golden ratio which is 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus etc and that seems like a crazy idea perhaps if this is a first continued fraction you've ever seen so to get a grip on it just write this up to a certain point and then put a zeros after that and that gives you an approximation to the golden ratio up to some sort of you know you're calculating the continued fraction up to a certain depth um and you know the the deeper you go the closer to the real golden ratio you get anyway it is interesting to think about this as a truly infinite kind of thing where this continued fraction goes on forever and you see what we're doing here is we're always adding one we do one over always but the thing we're adding on here is always one it's one plus and then one plus and one plus so this has a continued fraction representation like this one and then it's just a load of ones because all of these things you're adding on are always ones um so we could represent the golden ratio as a continued fraction like this and then well why not we can put other numbers in here instead we can think about other real numbers where these aren't all ones so in general we could write a naught and then a1 a2 etc to represent this kind of continued fraction where the things that we're adding on are these general numbers here so this is a really interesting idea and it's it gives one a way to think about what what real numbers are which is in many ways more appropriate than digits okay so if you write an important real number like the square root of 2 or pi as digits so like a load of symbols 0 to 9 in a list etc well the digital sequences of those numbers even if you write them in other bases usually they tend to just look random but the continued fraction representations of these kinds of numbers um, have a lot of order to them and so that's a sort of sign that this is a nice a appropriate way to look at real numbers anyway that's a bit of background on continued fractions the very interesting thing about the golden ratio is that in some sense it's the hardest real number for us to approximate okay so it turns out that not only are continued fractions very good ways of um, sort of conceptually thinking about real numbers they're also very good ways of actually calculating them so uh, obviously in the real world we can't um, we can't really represent stuff like the square root of 2 properly for the sake of our our real world arithmetic which we always do with uh, rational numbers so we need a approximation to the square root of 2 and it turns out that writing it as a sort of truncated um, continued fraction is is in some sense the best way to approximate these irrational numbers um, and then you can ask an interesting question which is well what's the hardest um, irrational number to approximate with rational numbers what's the hardest real number for us to sort of represent in the in the real world of discrete rational computation and guess what that number is yeah it's the golden ratio again so it seems to have this appearance in the form of continued fractions and indeed it seems to have a really special nature out of all the numbers um i've heard there's more connections to do with lots of real numbers having continued fraction forms which look like the representation of the golden ratio although i have to check my sources more to say things definite about that anyway that's a summary of some places where this golden ratio comes up just a few from mathematics and you know i just recommend you have a look on the wikipedia page for the golden ratio basically if this is new to you because it's amazing it's it's amazing how much this number appears and i've only talked about a few of the different places